Ralph Axe with Learjet. You're here doing kind of a program update on the Lear 85 at NBAA. Where does the project stand right now? What are you looking forward to? So a lot of momentum, a lot of great work going on uh, worldwide. Uh, all our major assemblies uh, in our Mex Mexico facility uh, progressing, which we're very proud of. Final line, which is in Wichita. We did a 28,000 square foot expansion. That's in place now, tooling arriving, all in anticipation of those major assemblies coming up from Mexico. A lot of excitement, a lot of in suppliers worldwide as well. You know, we have 41 uh, companies that work with us. And uh, so it's not about just the structure, it's everyone else and all the systems. And so a lot of the suppliers now, their test rigs up and running, and it's all about exercising those systems before they ship parts to us on our final assembly line. What does that mean to exercise the systems? So no different than uh, you know, uh, anything else you want to make sure the reliability is there. It's, uh, you know, the design is done, now they develop a rig where they put their system on it, they drive it, they try to break it, so it really performs its intended function. And it's all about ensuring that they debug it so that when the parts do come to us on the final line, they come to us with confidence. What's different about the Lear 85 compared to some of the other business jets that are out there today? Yeah, so when you look at the Lear 85, I mean, the first thing I do just uh, walk into the interior. Very bright, very roomy. You know, a lot, a lot of thought put into the customer aspect. And the customer has come along with us throughout the entire journey. You know, and so a lot of what goes on in the cabin is really driven by the customers. Same goes for the cockpit. You know, we've got focus groups with customers looking at that, the functionality, the ergonomics. And, you know, if you look at the entire product, the value proposition is excellent. The type of features and functionality, next to none. So we're very excited about that. Have you made decisions yet about avionics, engines, those kinds of things? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so all those decisions were made when we launched the program. And uh, all those suppliers are coming along the journey. And uh, all those suppliers, uh, you know, engines, engines are ready to ship to us on final line. You know, so we're very excited. You mentioned during your, your news conference, one of the things that stuck in my mind was the fact that your entire pressure fuselage is one part number. What Incredible, was the thinking huh? behind Incredible. making that, uh, designing that that way? Yeah, so a, a single pressure fuselage. This is where you really take composites to that next level. If you take a, a traditional aircraft, you'd have hundreds and hundreds of parts and fasteners. So when you start to really start design in composites, it's you know, being able to develop something like that in one part. You know, we have other parts on the aircraft that if you look at it and you were to do it in metallic, you'd have two, three, four parts. So again, it's all about uh, leveraging the technology, leveraging composites, you know, know-how, and so this is what we've done. You also said that that is going to continue to be a hand-laid product yeah. through the entire production of the aircraft. Why make that decision to do that as opposed to automating that process? The type of technology that we chose from the onset was to ensure that it continues to be a hand layup. I mean, the, it just doesn't lend itself to automate. If I were to show you, you know, how this is laid up, you know, and the different ply sizes, if all the plies were always the same size and always went in the same place, you could think about automating. But, you know, all the sizes and shapes of the molds and so on are very different. All the different plies are different sizes. You know, so there's a real roadmap to get through all that. The best way to do it and the simplest way to do it is hand layup. You know? Your display here said the race is on. What is that race? Uh, for us, it's the excitement just to bring it to, uh, to, uh, into service. You know, so, so for us, it's all about you know, energizing uh, our workforce. It's all about uh, you know, energizing the community. And uh, when you're in product development, I tell you, it's always a race. And that entry into service is expected when? 2013, on track. And so you're into the very first beginnings of the certification process? Yeah, so in parallel, you have to certify the product. So a lot of the development is complete. We're now making parts. We're going to assemble parts. In parallel to that, the structure, you have to do all the certification testing. We're doing all that. And then, of course, you've got the flight testing. So a lot of work ahead. Very good. Ralph, thank you very much for taking some time to speak with us on Aero News. Super. Thank you.
Arrow TV is brought to you by... Avidyne sets a new standard for simplicity and safety with our all-new panel-mounted avionics stack. The IFD540 GPS Navcom features our award-winning FMS with an intuitive touchscreen user interface. Plus, it's a slide-in replacement for 530 series navigators, which reduces installation costs. The AMX240 is our new audio panel with intercom and Bluetooth music interface. And our AXP340 Mode S transponder with ADS-B out is a slide-in replacement for existing KT76A transponders. Add in our innovative DFC-90 series autopilot with flight envelope protection and you've got the most capable and easy-to-use avionics stack any pilot could ever need. Now you have a choice in the